This video will talk about linear mixed models. We'll talk about how these kinds of models differ from simple and multiple linear regression. We'll talk about what fixed and random effects are and how to apply them to models. And then we'll go through a case study using mixed models applied to estimating the heights of trees. And then we'll talk about some common questions that an analyst might have if they're fitting a linear mixed model. I'd like to bring this up in the class uh, because this really hit home for me uh, in talking with a lot of other colleagues about the importance of mixed models and that our students really need to learn them uh, that work in natural resources and agriculture fields. So this is a direct comment from a peer reviewer that I received on a paper I submitted earlier this year. Uh, we had done what we might call a traditional analysis of variance, but the reviewer was really interested and thought that the data were set up in a fashion that we could use mixed models to analyze them. And so this really urged us, and as it turned out, the, the reviewer was correct, and that we could use linear mixed models to assess um, the, the response variable that we were interested in. And this specific example is from a data set on silviculture. We had a silviculture treatment, uh, and we were looking at different uh, outcomes of that project. Uh, and so this is some real-world examples of uh, the importance of knowing what mixed models are in today's world. To understand what they are, let's take a step back and review simple linear regression. We've seen this formula a lot. We want to estimate some response variable y, and we need to choose values for beta 0 and beta 1, or the intercept and slope, that best fit our, our data. And so we're going to use the principles of least squares to do this. And ideally, we would choose the values beta 0 and beta 1 based on how the residual sums of squares are minimized. That is, we want to choose the regression line so that most of the points fall close to it, or the residual sums of squares is as small as possible. Now, we never really talked about the concept of a fixed parameter, but we can think about beta 0 and beta 1 as being fixed. That is, we've used regression and we've estimated them, and we don't allow them to vary at all. They're just two values that we use in our regression. Now, the importance of agriculture and natural resources data, one of the characteristics of them is that the data are often nested. So these data can be nested spatially. That is, uh, they could be arranged in a spatial pattern that makes them uh, nested within other units. Or they could be nested temporally. And so we might visit the same things year after year, or we might measure something throughout the experiment and throughout a study, and we might think that they're nested in that way. The value, valuable thing about mixed models is that they can account for the hierarchy within data. This is important, and it gets back to that fact that the data might be nested. Mixed models also consist of fixed and random effects, which we'll talk more about when we talk about how to set up mixed models. Take for an example a stand, a forest stand. The trees in this area are delineated from different stands because they all are approximately the same age, the same species, and it generally looks like the same forest that you're in. So say we might be having collecting data in this forest stand. Now to collect that data, we might take measurement plots in the stand. Here's where we might collect information on the size, species, and status of individual trees. So no doubt there will be variability in the number and characteristics of trees as we move from one plot to the next. But between plots in the same stand, if we look at the variability, that variability between plots in the same stand will be lower than if we were to look outside the stand into a different stand. So this is important to understand. This means that we can maybe take into account some of the variability that we see both within the stand and maybe across differences in the plots in that stand. And so this is really the value of linear mixed models. Now linear mixed models consist of both fixed and random effects. Fixed effects we can think of are as population average values. So this could be similar to the beta zero and the beta one values from ordinary least squares. The good thing about linear mixed models is that they also include random effects. 
And so this represents each individual's deviation from a fixed parameter. So now let's see what that looks like. One example is to let the intercept in a regression model be a random effect. And so that might look something like this. Note that this looks very similar to our simple linear regression, but now we have little b sub i. Little b sub i is our random effect for effect i. Now i can be anything that might be found in our data. It could be any uh, subject that we're interested in. So we can then consider the beta 0 and the beta 1 values as fixed effects and the little b sub i as the random effect in this linear mixed model. So this random effect is going to differ for each level of i. The big assumption here that we make is that the random effects b sub i they're distributed normally with a mean of zero and some variance associated with them that we might be interested in learning more about. So what does that look like? Well, we can set different parameters to be random if the intercept itself is random. Uh, and so remember our value little b sub i. Well, that would mean, say we're looking at a regression line, all that would mean is that we have different y-intercepts depending on each subject i. And so here we can see that there are different lines that are shifted differently depending on the random effect b sub i. So in this model, predictions would vary depending on each subject's random intercept term, but the slopes, note, are still the same. Well, we can set the slope to be the random effect if we want. How that would look like is we have our fixed effect for the intercept, our fixed effect for the slope, but we're going to add a random effect. We'll call that b sub i. And note that we can get different values of the slope if we allow the slope to be random. And so in this case, now we all share the same y-intercept, but it's the slopes that differ. You can see this pink line has a steeper slope than this red line, which is nearly flat. And so we can set the slope to be random. We could also set both the intercept and slope to be random. In that case, we would have still our two fixed effects for the intercept beta 0 and the slope beta 1. But now we have a random intercept term, which we'll call a sub i. And we have a random slope term, which we'll call b sub i. Now how that looks is that all of the different lines, all of the different subjects have different y-intercepts. And they all have different slopes. And so note that the slope and the intercept is different because both terms are random in this model. The random effects can also be nested. And this is really common in agriculture and natural resources. So we're going to set the random effect to the intercept. And note we've got our fixed parameter beta 0 and our fixed parameter beta 1 for the intercept and slope. Now we're going to nest the two random effect terms. So we're going to have a random effect for b sub i, where i represents the i subject. And we've got another random effect for b sub i j, where i j represents the jth subject nested within subject i. And so if we go back to our example with the trees, we might be collecting measurements of trees in plots. And so plots might be j, our jth subject or our jth plot. We collect those in stands. And we might consider different stands as our i. Our ith subject is our ith stand. And so this allows us to take account variability both at the stand and at the plot level. And so in doing this, we can nest the random effects and get a good estimate or presumably a better estimate of the variable that we're interested in, y.